All right, today we're going to talk about galaxies. Now, as we look through the whole universe, we try to break things down in order into groups. Galaxies are kind of like neighborhoods. Galaxies are a huge group of stars bound together by gravity. At the center of many galaxies lies a supermassive black hole. Um, we can observe galaxies. We can see they're moving through space. We can see the stars that make them up. But since so many of them are so far away, Originally, we, what people thought were stars were actually galaxies. When we first started looking through telescopes, they weren't that powerful. And so we saw these faint, fuzzy objects out there. And so people identified them as stars. But as we got better and better telescopes, we started looking at them, and all of a sudden we noticed, hey, there's some structure here, and there's actually stars inside these fuzzy things. These are collections of stars. And we are in one collection of that. We are in the Milky Way galaxy. And so we have stars which are very close to us, and then we have stars that are outside of our own galaxy. Now, there are three types of galaxies. The main type that uh, we typically look at, because it's the one we're in, is a spiral galaxy. Now, a spiral galaxy has a bulge in the middle uh, where there's a huge collection of stars uh, and arms that spiral outwards. These arms are, again, a collection of stars and gas and dust, and lots of young stars occur on the outside. Our own galaxy, Milky Way Galaxy, is a spiral galaxy. And you can find us here on one arm of that. We're on one part of that. Now the Milky Way galaxy. The center of the galaxy is about 25,000 light years away from Earth. Remember that the light year? One light year is the distance that light travels in a year. Uh, so it takes 25,000 years for light to travel from the center of our own galaxy to us. And so it is very, very far away. And that's why most of the stars you see in the night sky are in our own galaxy. Now, it is hidden to us by large clouds of dust and gas, so visibly we can't see it very well. If you look at other types of light, other parts of the electromagnetic spectrum, we can see parts of it. Now, we are one of the spiral arms on the outside, and the total galaxy is about 100,000 light years wide. So it would take 100,000 years for light to travel from one side of the galaxy to the other. So this is a, what you would see if you went outside tonight, it was clear out, and... You had no other lights near you. You would actually see the Milky Way galaxy. You see this very bright region stretching from one part of the horizon to the other part. And you can understand why we call it the Milky Way. When you look at it, it looks very milky uh, looking at the center. It looks, the light is diffused a lot because of the stars that occur in there. And so we are looking towards the center of our own galaxy. Remember, we're on the outside spiral arm. And so we can look back towards our own galaxy. Uh, this is kind of an artist's rendition of what our galaxy will look like. The center of the galaxy is here, and uh, our data shows a black hole in the center that has a huge gravitational influence on stuff near there. Uh, there's a lot of gas and dust and material in here, so that's what's obscuring it. Then you can see these kind of spiral arms. Now, the thing is, this rotates. I mean, this whole structure rotates around as it travels through space, and we would find ourselves just outside on one of these arms. And that would be our solar system. And so we can see all this stuff around us. Not much of the galaxy is on the other side, but most of it's towards this way. Now, this is a kind of a map of our galaxy. You can see that our sun would be located here. Perseus arm, Orion arm, Centaurus arm, Sagittarius arm, Cygnus arm. These are all different arms of that. And, of course, they're named after the constellations, the uh, stars that are contained. Uh, some of them are in that arm. Um... And so our night sky is pretty much dominated by our own galaxy. That doesn't mean we can't see other galaxies. We just have to be looking away from the center. So if we look out this way, we can see other galaxies. Where if we start looking towards the center, that center is going to block our view. Now there are other types of other spiral galaxies. This is the black eye galaxy, also called M64. Uh, you'll see with a lot of galaxies and large objects like that in space, they have an M number with them. Uh, they are... And I, really hoping my spelling's right here, Messier objects, uh, because he was a scientist who, astronomer who looked in night sky, started categorizing these objects, uh, and so he started a table of them, and this is Messier 64. Uh, this is the spiral galaxy MA3, which is called the Southern Pinwheel, and you can see the bulge in the center, you can see the spiral arms. Now, there are different types of spiral galaxies, uh, there's barred spiral, and, uh, other types, but we'll just focus on spiral galaxies as a main type. This is spiral galaxy M81. This picture was taken from Hubble. Uh, Hubble telescope has allowed us to see stars more clearly than ever before. This is the Sombrero galaxy. Um, 
And this is actually looking at, you know, we see it almost on its side. So that's why it kind of looks like a sombrero. You can see that the arms look like, you know, the bottom of the rim of the hat and then gets larger here. Uh, this is x-ray picture up here. This is optical. That means with what we can see. The reason why it's color green is just uh, that it's a false color so that when we put these all together, you can tell what is from what image. And this is infrared. So first off, notice that if we look at the different types of light, we all see different things. We're seeing different components of that galaxy. Uh, we put them all together. It gives us an understanding of how it's really formed and what it's made. Uh, X-rays are only produced by certain types of objects. You can see they have to be very, very bright objects, very, very hot objects, uh, optical light and infrared, more like our own star, and that could be even the gas and dust. M31, the Andromeda galaxy, it's kind of tilted on its side to us. Um, this is actually the nearest neighbor to our own galaxy, and uh, we are actually on a collision course with the Andromeda galaxy, but it's not going to happen for a very, very long time. And again, just some more pictures of spiral galaxies very beautiful to look at and sometimes we get lucky and we see them kind of from like above or instead of from their side they aren't as interesting from their side now another type of galaxy is a regular galaxy this has no regular shapes but contains lots lots of dust and gas and young stars so it's a small stellar region um, a lot of young stuff a lot of stuff forming but no definite shape so this is kind of we had two big shapes and then we had a the kind of leftover stuff, we just threw it all together. The other big shape is an elliptical galaxy. And so, of course, we all know what an ellipse is, because we understood Kepler's law. But an elliptical galaxy looks like a round or flat ball. It's mostly older stars contained in this. Um, and so it's material. Not a lot of gas and dust. And so these are stars on their way out. Uh, this is Jumbo Galaxy Centaurus A. You can kind of see that this is mostly elliptical. Uh, but you can see kind of, you know, different stuff in the middle. Now, once we figured out what galaxies were, we started looking at them. Now, if we analyze the light coming from a galaxy, we can notice a very interesting thing. And it was Hubble, who, of course, Hubble's telescope was named after. Uh, this was named after. Uh, he came up with a law. Pretty much by observing the star, uh, galaxies, he noticed that the farther away an object is in space, the faster it's moving away from us. Uh, and so there's a lot of stuff in space that's all moving away from us. There's some things moving towards us. Most of space is moving away. It's getting farther and farther apart. Now, one way we can see this easily is because of the light it sends us. Most of the light we get from stars is red shifted. As a star moves away from us, the observer, that's us, um, the light it sends becomes shifted towards the red end of the spectrum. Remember, we have red over here. We have blue over here. Well, if the light, like say, let's say I had this type of light, this type of light, this type of light, they all of a sudden get shifted a bit and moved, so they're a different frequency, different wavelength. Um, it's because it's moving away from us. Stars move towards us, we call blue shifting. But stars moving away from us, their light gets shifted. Now, this is called the Doppler effect. Uh, it's the same reason why if you hear a police car coming towards you, the pitch of the siren go goes up as it gets closer to you, and then the pitch goes down as it gets farther away. Uh, it's because the frequency changes as the whatever's producing it is moving towards you or away from you. So, first off, uh, Hubble found that most of the universe is going away from us. Now, this is very important because it's one of the key aspects to one of the biggest theories in uh, astronomy. Uh, I say it's biggest because it helps explain a lot of what we observe, and that is the Big Bang Theory. Now, the Big Bang Theory is a broadly accepted theory for the origin and evolution of the universe. There's a lot of evidence stated for this. and What it pretty much states, the basics of it, is that about 12 to 14 billion years ago, maybe as much as 15 or 16, the portion of the universe we see today uh, was only a few millimeters across. Pretty much everything was compacted almost to a single point. It has since expanded from the hottest end state into the vast, much cooler cosmos we see today. So it started at a single point, and then it expanded outwards and got bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. And, you know, it keeps expanding. Now, the Big Bang Theory tries to explain what's happened in the past. We can use this to try to infer what's going to happen in the future. But the one thing we don't know to predict the future of our universe is how much mass is there in the universe now we talk about dark matter dark matter is material that does not produce or reflect light it's matter that we can't see and so we don't know how much of our universe is made up of the stuff that we can't see we can see its influence on objects as they move through space 
but we need to figure out how much of it is there because that mass will determine if our universe keeps expanding forever or if our universe will actually stop at a point and then start contracting inward. Uh, think about uh, a yo-yo. You let it go down, then it comes back up. Well, our galaxy could be, our universe could be like a yo-yo. It expands outwards and then it comes back in and gets contracted. Now, again, evidence for the Big Bang. Hubble's Law, again, our observations about galaxies. There is a tremendous amount of background radiation, which is radiation coming from all parts of the universe uh, left over from when it expanded and it was very, very hot. Uh, we discovered this accidentally. A couple of astronomers who were using a radio telescope to look at the night sky, or microwave, sorry, uh, also noticed a lot of noise. And they couldn't figure out why it was. They actually thought it might have been caused by the birds that were nesting in the telescope. Uh, but what they actually found out was it was actually radiation coming to us from all parts of the galaxy. And our current understanding of the theory of gravity, they all combine together to support the Big Bang. Now, the Big Bang is the main scientific theory for the formation and evolution of the universe. Um, it's under construction, of course, because of this guy right here. Oops, sorry. Uh, our theory of gravity. Uh, at, in the LHC, which is the Large Hadron Collider at CERN in Switzerland, it's a particle accelerator. What this is helping us trying to do is try to figure out what's going on. Is there the Bigs uh, particle, the Bigs boson particle? Because if there exists this, uh, that would give us a better understanding of gravity, how it works, why is there gravity. The, gravity is one of the most interesting things because uh, we can go back to Kepler's laws. He stated why, he states what path the planets take. He didn't understand why they took that path. Newton started coming in a little bit later, Sir Isaac Newton. He came up with the basic idea of the theory of gravity, but his was a law. It was more of the observation that there's gravity, gave a name to it. Uh, it wasn't later until really Einstein that we started getting to relativity and trying to figure out really why is there gravity it has to do with some subatomic particle but we're not sure what particle that is and how it interacts exactly and so gravity is one of those things that we're still constantly working on trying to understand and as our understanding of gravity improves well the big bang will improve uh you no know, scientific theory is perfect. I mean, we deal with certain amounts of uncertainty in science, but we're okay with that. We understand that we're just trying to get a better understanding of the universe in which we live in. But the thing is, you look at the universe, you see it's expanding, you see that there's energy left over from this, you see the Big Bang. Um, when we look into the night sky, we can look backwards, 10, 12, billion years into the past if we're looking that far away in light years and so we can start to start looking back towards the big bang we can't probably see the beginning of the universe because we can't look that far away but we can see all this evidence saying that our universe is not static our universe is not at rest i mean it's expanding things are moving things are changing and that leads us then to the questioning, okay, if it's changing, let's follow that backwards. I'll show you a quick little clip uh, helping explain